please introduce yourself and let the audience know a little bit about you, including how art became your passion. My name is Rita Whitney. Um, I always thought that I was going to be a chef. Since I was a kid, I always wanted to cook. I was in a really cool cooking program that I was enrolled in when I was in high school. And then I took one summer program where I got to paint, and I said, this is what I'm doing. This is what I love. I never wanted to do anything else since that very moment. Just that one class, that one really awesome teacher that I had. And so then I started looking into schools for, for art to go so I could paint. And I didn't really know what was going to happen. I just knew that I loved art and that I wanted to make art. And um, so I just kind of figured it out from there. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> Explain the processes you go through when certain and original work of art. Okay, that's a tough one. Because there are so many different kinds of ways to make art. And so I went to college at York College here. That's why I live in York now, because I came here to go to school and ended up staying. And when you're in school, they give you all sorts of different projects, right? Like you guys have different projects in different areas, science and math and all of that stuff, right? So art is kind of the same way. There's all sorts of different types of ways to do it. And so they give you different projects to kind of see what you like. So some days we would start making landscape paintings, and I didn't really like that very much. And then sometimes we would make them by doing a bunch of drawings, and I would cut the drawings out and kind of piece them back together and then do a painting of that, but I didn't really like that either. So finally, I went to this really cool place um, called Chautauqua Institute in New York, which is a summer program where you go and you just make art for four weeks. You just stay, they give you a place to live. And that's where I started to really figure out how I wanted to make my art. And that was what's called abstract. So I would start to make paintings, and I would paint a picture of something, maybe myself, or a building, or some flowers, or something like that. And then I would kind of look at how the colors and the shapes kind of fit together, almost like a Tetris board, right? And then I would play with those colors and the shapes, and I'd say, no, that yellow is a little too bright. I'm going to make that, that shape blue instead of yellow. And no, this one's a little too small. Let's make this shape a little bigger. And I would just keep painting and painting and painting and changing things, almost like problem solving. I see it as problem solving. Like, mm, this part doesn't feel right. I'm going to make it look a little different. And then I would just keep doing that and doing that until I would look at it, and I would think, there is nothing else that I want to change about this painting, and that's how I know when I'm done. And so that's how I make paintings. So I don't know what it's going to look like at the end when I first start it, right? It's not like I'm illustrating, which is maybe drawing for like a picture book or something like that. I don't think, oh, I'm going to draw a mermaid fighting with a sea monster, and then I draw it. <laughs> that's not quite how it works, in my case anyway. There are plenty of people that make art like that, but I just work with what's already there, and I problem solve until it feels good to me. Share your perspective and your view of, and your, share your perspective and your view of art. What makes your art special? What makes you choose colors, medium, shapes, or lines? Okay, so that is a good follow-up question to the first one, right? Um, I am, I'm going to say, even though I make abstract paintings, which um, abstract is a painting that doesn't have something representational in it. So it doesn't have a picture of something. Um, it's just shapes and colors mixed together. And I'm kind of a traditional person. I really like um, really famous traditional painters. I really like Rembrandt, and I really like um, Michelangelo, and I like all of these people. Um, I don't remember where I was going. <laughs> what makes my art special or different? Um, I think it's just how I look at it and how I, I don't see a lot of other people doing the kinds of paintings that I'm doing or working in the, the same way that I'm painting. Um, so I think that just my view on the world and my uniqueness as a person kind of comes out in my art. And even when I do make paintings that are of something, I did a painting of Mr. Dave's coffee shop. I did a painting of that and gave it to him for Christmas. And it still has my personal style, these really bright colors. Um, I like to use super, super bright colors right out of the tube. Um, 
And so that you can still tell that it's my work, even though it maybe isn't abstract in that way. Um, Tell us about your different roles you serve and and how you manage it all. <laughs> I like that you guys asked that question because I get a lot of adults that ask me that question too. <laughs> um, so I do a lot of different things, uh, and that's kind of what keeps it interesting. So. When I first got out of college, I helped to start an art gallery because there wasn't a lot of art galleries in New York at the time, and this was only four or five years ago. And so I started an art gallery, and it was all volunteer. I would just go and help out, and I, we were able to start, um, I started to pay myself. We started fundraising enough that then I could make it just for volunteer going into an actual job. And then we got nonprofit certified, which is a really big deal. You have to go through all this application stuff, and then you get this, um, what's called a nonprofit certification, and that's really a big, cool deal for your gallery to have. And then, that was getting to a point where it was stable. I felt like they didn't need me anymore. And so I left there to go open my own store, because I wanted to do my own thing, you know? Um, and so now I sell art supplies, and I work with a lot of different people in the community. Along the way, I've also taught quite a bit. I teach, um, I've taught art for years and years and years at different places at the York JCC here. I taught at York College for a little bit. I taught at Creative York, which used to be called York Arts. If you guys have heard of that gallery in York. And so all of those things kind of led me to figure out what I really wanted to do. Most recently I taught at the Salvation Army, taught some art that was really cool. Um, I also teach yoga. I learned how to teach yoga last year, and I've been doing that, and that's really fun, because it's totally different from the art side of my brain. And so I get to do something different, and I get to exercise, and that's always really fun, too. And I also, <laughs> I started, helped to start another nonprofit organization, which is called the Mount Gretna School of Art. Has anybody heard of Mount Gretna, the place? It's like a city. It's not too far from here. It's only an hour from here. Okay. It's a really cool town. And I helped to start a summer artist program. So just like the one I said that I went to in Chautauqua, New York, this one is here. It's very close by here. And we take students from all over the country and they come and they live in Mount Gretna with us for three weeks and they just have to, six weeks, six weeks, and they just have to make art. We teach them how to paint and they, you know, so instead of coming to a school where you're learning all different subjects, they're focusing and they're only learning about art. Um, so I think I did all of those things because I like to start new stuff. When I think um, that something could be improved or a way that an organization works could be better, I like to just start it myself <laughs> and kind of pave the way for new things. And how do I balance it all? I, I don't know <laughs> the answer to that question. Um, I work really hard at it, and I only do things that I really care about, and I'm fortunate to be able to do that. So everything that I do, I love it so, so much that I'm willing to work weird hours. I'm willing to work late into the night or to travel or do anything that I need to do to be able to make those things happen because I'm passionate about my store. I'm passionate about um, teaching arts in York. Um, I do a program through my store where I donate art supplies to a lot of the city schools that don't have art programs or don't have money to buy art supplies. Um, and so I've started a program where we can give these kids, just like your age, but at a different school, all the art supplies that they need. And I care about that so much that it's totally worth it. And so I just do whatever I have to do to balance. And I will say that doing yoga helps a lot too because I practice my balance in my tree pose and it helps me practice my balance in life too. Personal stuff, work stuff, we make it all work together. And I'm also very fortunate to have surrounded myself by really good friends that are supportive and love what I do and agree um, with all of the things that I'm passionate about. They're passionate about it too. So I get a lot of help. I'm certainly not doing it all on my own. <laughs> Tell us what you think the future holds for the arts in New York. Mm, it's going to be big. <laughs> I have seen amazing growth in just the five years that I've been a part of the art scene in New York. 
and it there the block where my store is used to have nothing on it there was a hair salon and there was a, a real estate company and there was the house that that people lived in where we ended up starting the art gallery and um, it was kind of a, a place that you didn't want to go so much. A lot of people were like, oh, it's kind of dangerous maybe, like they didn't want to go there. And so we started putting in all of these cool arts things and changing the whole neighborhood. And now it's this awesome, thriving neighborhood that everybody wants to come to. And so I think we're just going to see more and more and more of that. Because York is a super special place. There's no other place like it. Um, you can really, I believe, that you can do anything you want here. It's so cool because there's so many, I'm going to say crazy people just like me, that are doing so many cool things, just like Mr. Dave. He's a really big inspiration to me because anything that he's like, this would be a good idea, he does it. And it's really, really cool, and I feel the same way. And we have so many awesome people that are just, um, we like to say, Crazy becomes the new normal. <laughs> Crazy in a good way. In a really driven and wanting to do good things and start new businesses um, kind of way. So that's what York City is filled with. That's what York is filled with, is these people that have big ideas. And so I think it's just gonna be more art galleries, more stores, more community projects, um, murals around the city. A lot of people are talking about doing that kind of stuff. Big mural projects and things like that. So I think it's all just going to make York this big arts town that everyone's going to want to come see because it's going to be so cool. <laughs> can you please share some of your art that you made? Absolutely I can. All right. So this is actually a print. <clears throat> so this is a, um, the original painting of this one is just about this size, it's pretty big. And I like this painting a lot. So this is, um, it looks pretty good, right? It almost looks three dimensional. It's actually a photo of my painting that we printed on canvas and then made it look just like a canvas. And then I put a little bit of paint on top to make it look really good. The original of this one is in that show at Market View Arts, that's why I couldn't bring it with me. But I like this painting a lot because there have been um, only, okay. I look at painting like a job. I work hard at it, and it's not always fun. Yes, I'm passionate about it, but sometimes even when you're passionate about something, it's really hard work. <laughs> and you might get stuck, you might not know what to do, and then there are times when I paint that I get so swept up, I forget about time, I forget to eat, I just get really into my painting, and I don't want to do anything else. I don't even think about it. And this painting is one of those times where uh, that happened to me. Can I take questions? Is that cool? Is it, yeah? Do you have a question? Like a dragon? Cool! Yeah, actually, that's a great thing. Yeah. We can look at a lot of different things. Do we see anything? Does anybody see anything else? Raise your hand. Yeah. A wave? Yeah, I see a wave in it too. Anything else? What do you see? A pony? Okay. Yeah? I see an eagle head. An eagle head. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. I see a swan. A swan? Okay. I like that. Do you guys see some of the things that we're seeing? Yeah. I see a whale. A whale? Okay, let's do two more. Yeah. Uh, I see a swordfish. A swordfish? Oh, I like that in the back. I see an elephant. An elephant? Where? Yeah, there's lots of blue. Okay, all right, we'll keep going. <laughs> a half of, like, a rabbit head. <laughs> half of, just like the side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I see a flamingo. Ooh, a flamingo, I like that. So there's lots of, we could do this all day, right? This is why people that buy my work like my work, because they can sit and look at it and look at it and look at it and find new things every single time. And the cool, that's the cool thing about abstract paintings. Yeah, we'll do one more, go ahead. Um, I see like a fingernail. A fingernail, all right. <laughs> um, so you can actually look at these paintings in different ways. So we could look at it this way. Or sometimes I'll just turn it upside down and we'll look at it the other way. And then you see a whole new group of things. And I like to tell people that purchase my work that they can hang it any way they want. The painting then belongs to them once they've bought it. And actually the president of York College owns one of my paintings and she's the only person I know of who actually took me up on that. 
I hung my painting one way and she bought it and she said, nope, I want it sideways. And she turned it like this. And that's how it hangs in her house. <laughs> Which I thought was really cool. So, you guys see all these different things. I'll tell you, I don't see anything. Um, I made this painting really because um, I'm at a point in my life where I want to start having kids, right? Me and my husband thinking about having kids, and that's kind of what this painting symbolizes to me. Even though there's no, not any um, representational imagery, images, pictures of anything Heart that. <laughs> <laughs> There's no pictures that are going to lead you to that specific conclusion. But that's what it means to me, and that's the cool thing about art, because it means whatever it means to you. You get to decide. You as the viewer, we like to say, finish the work. So you seeing my painting, that's when the painting is completed. Uh, yeah, so I brought that one. This is a very, that's a pretty recent one. I brought my cute little Primark supply tote bag. And this is a little tiny painting that I brought. This is actually kind of an old painting. This is from my senior year of college, so this is six years old. Um, so I've been doing this kind of style for a long time. It's pretty cute. I like it. It's fun to hold. I stretched it myself. And it says K Rita King on the side, because that was my name then. <clears throat> um, not as complicated, but it's cute. I don't usually paint with these colors anymore. Um, I have a color scheme that I stick to pretty often. Um, but I like that one too. And I also brought to show you guys something else cool that I did recently. Um, so you got, do you guys like to color? Yeah, I like to color too. And a lot of adults now also really like to color. It's a cool thing. I sell so many coloring books at my store, you would not even believe it. And so I thought, how can we make a coloring book that highlights how awesome York is? And then I decided to get together with a group of my friends, 20 of them to be exact, and we decided to make a coloring book. And that's what this is. So this is a coloring book that I made and had printed and published and then sold at my store. And it's called Color at York. And a teacher from York College did the cover for me. And on the inside, there are 20 different images of paintings from artists here in York. These are all people that I know that work and live downtown and make cool paintings. Um, this is really cool. You guys been downtown, do you recognize this? Yeah, yeah a little bit. The, uh, the rotundas is what we call them. I think it's the old um, Capitol building or something like that. <laughs> uh, this one's cool, it's super complicated. This is actually the, um, the Wizard of Oz. Can you see the Wizard of Oz characters? Mm -hmm. Kinda, yeah? yeah. So I put...